Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to my new reaction video, When Chemicals Mix. Um, so I'm going to see what happens when OxyClean and Epsom Salt mix together to form a precipitate reaction. Let's see how it goes. Alright, hey guys. So before we actually get started on making that chemical reaction a thing, we need to talk a little bit about safety. So, so we are going to be using some regular household chemicals that are relatively safe, however, anything can be done dangerously and things can be done safely. So if we do this in a dangerous way, we're going to get sick, we're going to get hurt, or someone we know and love is going to get sick and or hurt. I don't want that to happen to you and I know you don't want that to happen to yourself or anyone else. So let's make sure that we know what we're doing and what we need to be careful of. So first off, you need to have a clean workspace. So somewhere where you're not going to be spilling your things all over, where you're not going to be tripping over things and knocking other stuff over. Make sure you have a nice clean area to work. Minimal distractions. So make sure all of your pets are outside or away from you, leaving you alone. Make sure your little brother, your little sister, your big brother, your big sister, um, everybody is leaving you alone and letting you do your thing. Make sure your parents know that you are working on this. Maybe see if they can help you out. Um, if your parents are trying to get you to do something else, then finish your chores first. Finish your chores, have your meal, whatever it is that they need you to do. Do what your parents want first, and then when you're done, make sure with their permission, you're able to work on this without distractions and without interruptions. Okay. As with anything where you're following instructions, you need to read every step carefully. So I'm going to make that nice and red. And make sure that you understand what it is asking. So if I write something and it makes absolutely no sense, read it again. Read it a second time. Think about what it's saying. If it still makes no sense, get on Zoom, get on Dojo, ask me Miss Riggle, what are you talking about? Gosh! Okay. Um, be careful while you work with these chemicals. Even though they're regular and safe chemicals that we use at home without thinking about, you still need to be thinking about safety. Ah, that is not a good highlighter. Undo, undo. I'm going to use this as my highlighter. Think about safety, okay? So our first chemical is Epsom salt. Its chemical name is magnesium sulfate. So if you've ever taken a nice warm bath and poured in some bath salts, you have probably used Epsom salts before. Um, it just is nice to soak in. It helps your muscles feel a little better. We normally use it as a bath soak, but if you eat or drink it, it will give you diarrhea. So what's happening is it's called a laxative if you take it internally. And so it, well, let I'm just going to leave it at that, okay? This is not Biology 101 today. Um, just don't do it. Do not eat it. Do not drink it. Keep it away from pets. Keep it away from children. Keep it away from anyone who thinks they want to do the Tide Pod Challenge. Okay. The next one. OxyClean. It does not have to be OxyClean brand. Okay. So I'm really looking for sodium percarbonate. And there's all sorts of random generic brands that cost a lot less money and you may already have on your shelf. You may even have OxyClean on your shelf. Um, so this is the stuff that we use to make our clothes nice and clean. It gets rid of grass stains and dirt, grime, and all that stuff. However, it can also irritate your eyes or your sensitive skin. So keep it away from pets. Keep it away from children. Keep it away from anyone who doesn't know any better. And if you mix it with bleach, ammonia, or any other cleaning products, it could release a dangerous gas. You would not be very happy about that. It could stink or it could not stink. Either way, if you breathe it, you're no good. Okay? So just don't do it. If someone accidentally eats or drinks this, please drink a glass of water super quick or some milk. Notify your parents and call poison control. Okay? Just... Don't even joke about it. Don't even play. Keep yourself safe. Okay, so if either of these chemicals spill on your hands, wash your hands immediately. If you have gloves, 
think of latex gloves, nitrile gloves, or those big fancy giant cleaning gloves. It might be a good idea to wear them. Otherwise, if you don't have gloves, just wash your hands off, that's fine. Um, if either of these splashes into your or anyone else's eyes, you're going to be rinsing your eye out with running water for 15 minutes with your eyes open the entire time. It's going to be uncomfortable, you are not going to be having fun, and you better do it for the full 15 minutes. Okay, so just don't splash it in your face. Don't splash it in anybody else's face. Don't let anybody splash you or anyone else, okay? So if you have goggles, either those fancy science chemical splash goggles or swimming goggles or any other type of goggles, it might be a good idea to wear them. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the good stuff. All right, so this is what you're going to need. You're going to need some water to start off. Good old-fashioned H2O. You can just get it straight out of the tap. Doesn't matter. Does not have to be filtered. Doesn't have to be bottled. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just has to be wet. Um, you're going to need about two cups worth, 16 ounces, to make this all happen. Your second ingredient you're going to need is Epsom salt. So I just talked about that a moment ago. That's the stuff that some people like to use to soak in the bath. And so Epsom salt, you're going to look for a bag that probably looks something like that. It should say magnesium sulfate on it. If it doesn't say magnesium sulfate, it's probably not bath salt. It's probably not Epsom salt. If it says lavender and citrus and who knows what, no, don't use that. You want just plain, good old-fashioned Epsom salt. All right, so this is the Walmart brand right here, what that bag looks like. The next item you're going to need is some OxyClean or oxygen booster or multi-purpose and oxygen cleaner. It goes by a bunch of different names if you're not going with the exact OxyClean brand. Um, so OxyClean brand, Oxy Laundry Booster from All, Home Sense from Kroger, the generic store brand stuff, multi-purpose oxygen cleaner. All three of those have the important chemical sodium percarbonate. And there we go. So you need to have your chemical sodium percarbonate. If you somehow actually manage to find what's called washing soda, which is just strictly sodium carbonate, that will also work just as well. Um, but I have the OxyClean stuff, so when I'm talking about my experiment, I'll be specifically mentioning sodium percarbonate, which has some hydrogen peroxide on it, which is gonna cause some bubbling. Um, but as long as you have Na2, CO3, your sodium carbonate, you are good to go. OxyClean has both. Okay, you're also going to need some masking tape or paper and clear tape or a label maker. You need to be able to make some labels to say what's going into your glass containers. You're going to need a marker, a pen, or a sharpie to write your labels. You're also going to need two or three, preferably three, glass, acrylic, or plastic containers. So containers that are clear and see-through. You should have two small containers that can hold 8 to 10 ounces. And then you'll need one larger container that will be able to hold at least twice as much, 16 to 20 ounces. If you can go even bigger than that, better. Um, a big giant Gatorade jug will hold 32 ounces. So think about maybe something like that. You'll need a teaspoon measuring spoon. You'll want two of them. You need two one teaspoon measuring spoons, or a one teaspoon and a one half teaspoon. You'll need a mixing stick, a spoon, or something else, and optional, you can use a measuring cup. So if you're using two small containers that you know are only eight to 10 ounces, you don't have to measure the water, just fill up the cup most of the way, and you've probably got pretty close to the amount that we need. If you're using something bigger, go ahead and use a measuring cup so you can make sure to not go overboard with your liquids. Now that we're done with that, we're going to get on to that reaction. All right, let's get this thing started. So, step step on my procedures and instructions, which I have right here in front of me. Again, if you cannot print it out, write them out by hand. 
it can be done. I wrote them out by hand before I typed them up, so you can type write them out if you'd want to. All right, so step one, review the ingredients and materials list to make sure you have everything you need. Let's make, let's make sure I have my chemicals. I have water right there, and it's in a measuring cup. I have my all-brand Oxy Laundry Booster for sensitive skin, but still, I don't want to put my hand in there for too long because it's going to be kind of irritating. And I have Epsom salt, courtesy of my favorite target if I'm not going to Amazon so I've got all my chemicals that I need and then I also need to make sure I have all of my materials I did skip ahead I did put my labels on already so tape marker I have my clear glasses so they're not perfectly clear but I can see through them in these areas right here and I have my larger container that I'm going to do my reaction in. This is just a cleaned out candle jar from Bath and Body Works. So I'm going to set that aside because I don't need that yet. So um, step two, create three labels. Label one as Epsom salt, do not drink. Right now you're just going to write the labels though, you're not going to put them on yet. Second label, OxyClean, do not drink. I add a little very poorly drawn skull and crossbones, and you're also going to want to label your magnesium carbonate and sodium sulfate. I know what these chemicals are, so I am going to call it MgCO3 and NaSO4 because I know what these are and I'm the only person that I have to worry about. Do not drink. exclamation point. Okay, so I just wrote that on my tape. I'm going to take my tape and I'm going to go ahead and label my container that I'm going to use later on for my final reaction. Right there. So I have all three of my labels. Tape label three. Oh, step three. Tape label three. Magnesium, carbonate, and sodium sulfate to the biggest container. So done. Label one on number one, two on number two, and number three on number three. I am done with steps one, two, and three. Not too bad. Step four, add about one cup or eight ounces of water to container one. This is just plain water, I promise. Just good old tap water. Mm -mm -mm. Good for the soul. Okay? Then add about one cup. to container two. Container two, I'm going to add about a cup worth of water. These are juice glasses. They only hold about eight cups to begin with. So as long as I don't fill them all the way to the top, I'm good. Leave a bit of room, even if it means you have to use a little less water. Step five, with a clean measuring spoon, measure one teaspoon of Epsom salt. Carefully check the label for container one. Verify that it says Epsom salt, do not drink or Epsom salt, no bebes. So if your family speaks Spanish at home, make sure that they can read what you're trying to tell them. So don't put don't drink if nobody in your house knows what don't drink does what it means, okay? Um, if you have the correct container, carefully add one teaspoon of Epsom salt crystals to the water. Mix well until all crystals are dissolved. So my blue label is my Epsom salt. And that's this one right here. I'm gonna take my teaspoon, one TSP or five milliliters. If it says TBSP, that's a tablespoon, it's going to be like three times as big. Make sure it's only a teaspoon. I'm going to take my Epsom salt, which you can't see it on my camera, but what ifs? Epsom salt. And I'm going to have, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're not doing an experiment. We're just doing a demonstration. Okay, so I'm going to take that. I'm going to use a clean spoon and I'm going to mix it up. I know this isn't seeing much on the camera, but you can kind of see there's little crystals floating around. I have little crystals on the bottom. Okay, I'm going to set that aside. Um, observe what you see. Any 
anything you hear? Do you feel anything? Does the water change color? Do you hear anything? Does water get warmer or colder or stay the same? It stays about the same. It gets cloudy for a little bit, but then the crystals dissolve and it goes clear. All right. With a clean measuring spoon, measure one teaspoon of OxyClean. Carefully check the label on container two. Verify that it says OxyClean. Do not drink. If you have the correct container, carefully add one teaspoon of OxyClean to the water. There will be a lot of bubbles. You may need to add very slowly, especially if your cup is already full. Don't make a mess. Make observations of what you see, hear, and or feel. Do you see bubbles? Does the water change color? Do you hear anything? Does the water get warmer, colder, or stay the same? Is there anything else you notice? Mix the solution as much as you can and let it sit. So I'm going to take my other teaspoon. I'm using two separate teaspoons so I don't get them mixed up, so I don't accidentally mix my Epsom salt and my OxyClean before I want to make this reaction happen. So I'm using a clean one. I'm going to take my all. I'm going to grab about a teaspoon. Again, it doesn't have to be perfectly exact. And then I'm going to put it in my cup that is labeled OxyClean. You can't see from the side, but this is the OxyClean one. I'm going to just drop that in there. And you can already see some bubbles coming up to the top. Luckily, there's not too strong of a reaction right now. Ooh, it looks... Oh, I was going to say it looks a little green, but that's my bright yellow label showing through. Okay, so I'm going to take my other clean spoon. So I have a spoon over there. I'm going to take another spoon over here. And I'm going to mix my OxyClean. Feels like it might be getting a little warmer. I'm going to put my ear close to it, but not over it. I can hear some bubbles. I can definitely see that it's foamy and bubbly. Okay, so I'm going to try to mix that as good as I can. Okay, it says let it sit. Number seven, wait about five minutes. After about five minutes, you'll mix each solution with their own spoon or mixing stick. Once the Epsom salt is completely dissolved and the OxyClean is mostly dissolved, you are ready for the next step. If the powders are not yet dissolved, you can wait another five minutes. We may not actually even need to wait that long. Just as long as there's not too many crystals left. Okay, so my Epsom salt is almost there. It has not been five minutes. But I don't want to make you wait for like 20, 25 more minutes just for me to get this done. So my Epsom salt is looking good. I used warmer water to make sure it would dissolve faster. And my OxyClean, when I stir it, it kind of clears up, but I can still hear and feel some crunchy powder on the bottom. So I'm going to try to mix that a little better. If I have to, I may just edit this part out of the video because you don't need to sit here and watch my reaction. You can watch your own, right? So I got some bubbles on my spoon. You can see them kind of going ch -ch 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 -ch. And you know what? It does look a little yellowy green. Huh, that's pretty cool. Okay. So while that's mixing, I'm hearing less crunches. So I think it's almost all dissolved. Okay, so I'm going to move on to step eight. Take the third container. Make sure it is big enough to hold at least two cups worth of water. Otherwise, you're going to have a big mess. Make sure the container is see-through so you can watch the reaction happen. Double check the label, magnesium carbonate and sodium sulfate. Do not drink. Magnesium carbonate, sodium sulfate, do not drink. So I'm going to take my Epsom salts first. And if you notice the Epsom salt, you can actually see all the way through it. It's almost perfectly clear. It looks just like water right now. I'm going to take my Epsom salt and pour it into my reaction container. And I'm going to set my cup aside. Okay. 
And then carefully pour in the second container labeled OxyClean. I'm going to give it one last stir, try to get rid of any last little bits of powder. Yeah, I'm not feeling or hearing any more powder in there, so I think we are about good. And I'm going to grab my phone to get another angle on this. Video. Okay. So I know I said don't put your phones nearby, but I'm going to be extra super careful. I bought this phone with my own money, so if I ruin it, well, guess who's got to buy a new one, right? Once you start buying your cell phone with your own money, you get to make choices like that too, right? Okay, so there's my Epsom salt water, and here's my OxyClean water. All cloudy, looking kind of like some very gross milk. Right there, I'm going to put them both in there. I'm going to get rid of this spoon for a moment. And I'm going to have my phone down here. Okay, I'm going to mix it in. So I'm automatically seeing a whole bunch of cloudiness happen in my mixture. Got some leftover foam on the OxyClean glass and I'm just going to mix it up. At this point I can use the dirty spoon because it's been in one of my reagents and one of my mixing chemicals. I'm going to mix that up, make sure all those dissolved chemicals can find each other and they can become friends and have a little party and do what they want to do. Okay, I'm going to take that out and we'll see if we see anything. I'm going to turn off that light. And I'm going to turn on the torch there. Ooh, that's a kind of cool effect going on. Okay, so on my cell phone camera, I can kind of see a little bit of it starting to separate out. To me, it reminds me of milk when it starts to curdle, sit out for a while because you accidentally forgot to drink all of it. So see how I'm moving it around and it's sloshing back and forth? Let's see if I can focus a little better. Alright, so that is our reaction. And I'm going to bring up... Was that even recording? No, it wasn't. Why would it have been? Okay, so I'm going to bring out my reactions that I did earlier today when I tested this to make sure that it was good to go and ready. So earlier today, I had made two mixtures, actually. And I've got one here. The You can still see bubbles, so my OxyClean is still kind of bubbling and turning into peroxide. But there's all sorts of smooshy, mushy, foamy stuff down at the bottom. It looks almost like a snow globe. So I can kind of see it in there. And then this one I had added a little bit of red food coloring. So actually that kind of helps it stand out. So all of my um, magnesium carbonate has fallen down to the bottom. And it's sitting in a solution of water and sodium sulfate. So I hope that you are going to enjoy doing this yourself. It's not the most exciting because you are having to do it at home. But it's something you can do at home. And it is chemistry that is relatively safe. It's not too scary. Um, and you may already have these ingredients just sitting, waiting to be used. All right, guys, I will see you later. Thanks, guys, for watching.